Sunday St. Peter's family, welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are here. There is a lot happening here, so we want to take a few minutes to share a couple of things that are coming up for you and our church family. If this is your first time here, or you're here every week, we'd love to have you connect with us by completing a Connect With Us card. You can scan the QR code you see on the screen and complete the form online. Or you can complete the card located in the pew. We are currently seeking church council nominations from the congregation. To submit a nomination, please email Julie Dietrich by January 22nd. If you are interested in learning more about the selection criteria and the roles and responsibilities for a council member, scan the QR code you see here on the screen. Mark your calendars and get excited to enjoy some great music at two of our upcoming concerts here at St. Peter's. Join us on Sunday, January 28th at 3.30 p.m. as our worship leaders, Daniel and Lindsay, come together for a music collaboration. This one-of-a-kind concert will feature guitar, piano, and voice. Daniel and Lindsay will perform a wide variety of music, from timeless classical pieces to well-known movie soundtrack songs. A free will offering will be collected and will directly support St. Peter's music ministry, specifically the purchase of a new timpani set. Join us again on Saturday, February 24th for the Concordia University Irvine Choir. They will be singing at our 6 p.m. worship service and then give a concert at 7.30. Check out the worship bulletin if you would like to provide a room for at least two of the students. You are invited to join us for one of our town hall meetings on either Sunday, January 28th or Tuesday, January 30th. Our town hall meeting will be hosted by Pastor John and the church council. Our goal is to intentionally engage the congregation in the planning and budgeting process for 2024. Are you new to St. Peter's and looking for the next step? Have you been here a while but ready to become a member? I'm New Here is St. Peter's Pathway to Membership. It's a six-week class that helps you experience community, encounter Jesus, and engage others. The first gathering will be on January 21st at noon. Lunch will be provided. If you're interested in registering, contact Julie with her email on the screen. Join our school ministry for a new student information meeting on Monday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. The purpose of this meeting is to inform parents about our school ministry, discuss school readiness issues, classroom structure, and provide a tour of our facilities. All families with students in the grade K through 8 for the 2024-25 school year are invited to attend. Please contact our principal, Mr. Paul Meredith, if you are interested in learning more about St. Peter's or would like to set up an appointment. All right, St. Peter's, that's all. May God bless your worship today. Good morning. Welcome to worship as we get to once again give thanks to God for everything that he has done for us. Uh, a couple of announcements before we begin. One, you might see people coming in like PJs and jammies with stuffies alongside them. It is PJ Day at Quest, and I think they planned a pretty good day to have PJs and stuffies as it is a little chilly out, outside. Uh, so if you see kids and volunteers dressed in their jammies, give them a high five and tell them that they look great. Uh, number two is that we have the privilege of hosting the Concordia University Irvine Choir a little bit later in the month of February, uh, and we need um, spots for 18 more um, college-age kiddos, uh, college-age students to uh, be housed. Um, so that, if that's something that you can do, if you can house some students overnight after they sing here and get them back to St. Peter's in the morning, uh, we would encourage you to talk to Lindsay. Uh, there's 18 more students that need a warm bed, uh, something warm and yummy to eat in the morning, and then a ride back to St. Peter's. Um, so if you like hospitality, if you like loving on college students, Now's your time, and we ask that you talk to Lindsay. Uh, as we begin service, as we usually do, I'm going to invite you to stand and greet those around you. Warm your hands up a little bit. Shake the hands of everybody else as we get ready for worship.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered here to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our own unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, declared you and us to be his children, and gathered us into the one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and grant us new life through his Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. 
At this point in time, we invite you to grab your mobile devices out and scan that QR code that's in your bulletin, also in, on, on the screen. Just one more note that if you scan the QR code, it's going to look a little bit different, ask you all the same questions, but it'll just have a little bit of a different look to it. We're in the middle of changing out databases here at, at, at church. Also, at this point in time, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward and collect our tithes and offerings that we have brought this, this morning. Two ways to give. One, you can go to stpeterscolumbus.org slash give or give your tithes and your offerings and offering plate as it passes. The epistle lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, 
preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. In a voice from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and at this point in time, we ask the kids of the congregation to come down for a special message right up here. morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's cold outside. Uh, it is so good to see you guys up here. I love all of the PJs and all of the stuffies. Um, does anybody have any names for their stuffies? Yeah, what is yours? Do what? Roar. Roar, like a lion, right? Roar? Nice, I love it. Who else has a name for their stuffy? Yeah. Izzy, we have an Izzy and a Roar. Anybody else? Yeah. Rex. Love it. An Izzy, a Roar, a Rex. Anybody else? Who brought their favorite stuffy with them? Is this your favorite stuffy? That's awesome. Uh, we have so many stuffies at my house too, uh, and I love to see all the squishmallows and everything else. Uh, we are talking about baptism this morning, um, and baptism is kind of a cool thing uh, because um, in it, you are, what, what the, the words that we use is that you are clothed in Christ's righteousness, which is a really big word, um, but here's what it means. Uh, clothed in Christ's righteousness is something that God does to you in your baptism, where, where he puts his perfection, his perfectness on you, and it's like, at least I'm going to say, it's like having warm, fuzzy jammies on. Um, now, uh, raise, raise, raise your hand. Which one is, is uh, more comfortable? Church clothes and dress shoes or fuzzy jammies? Raise your hand if you think church clothes is more comfortable, are more comfortable. That uh, makes sense. Raise your hand if you think fuzzy jammies are a lot more comfortable. Yeah, in baptism, God gives you your own set of fuzzy jammies where he gifts you everything that you need uh, to have what, what we say is to be in relationship with the Father. Now, when you get baptized here at St. Peter's, we give you two things. One, we give you this candle here. Um, and all of these uh, mean something. What do you think this candle means? If we would give you this candle, like it symbolizes something. It, it, it's meant to to, to tell you something. What do you think it tells, tells you? Um, I, I was just stretching. You were just stretching. Love it. Love it. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah! 
So the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples in the fire. Anybody remember what the name of that church holiday is called? It starts with a P, ends, ends with an intercost. What is it? Anybody else? Pentecost, yes. Uh, and when you receive this candle here, you are reminded that you, just like those disciples, have the Holy Spirit in your life. And because you have the Holy Spirit and you have the light of the world, guess what you are to people? You are the light. Now, what happens if this light shines in the darkness? Well, would, would it let you see things? You think so? Yeah. Um, uh, just do it. It is faint, yeah. Um, it would be, we need like a really bright flashlight to be able to see this whole place. Um, but you are given the Holy Spirit. What about this one? This is a white kind of like towel cloth. And what does it have on it? What is that picture? Yeah. A shell. Yeah. And what is down here? Does anybody know? Water. 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 Now, how many are there? Everybody count with me. Ready? Three. Oh my, you're quick. Ready? One, two, and three. three. Anybody have any idea what the three droplets would stand for? You bat, bat in a hundred? Three in one, which we call Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, in your baptism, you are given God's promise. Do you know what God's promise is in, in baptism? Here's, here's what it says at the end of the book of Matthew. He says, he'll be with you always until the very end of the age. He'll be with you always. Um, raise your hand uh, if you feel um, better when you have your stuffy with you. Any, anybody feel like more safe, more, uh, more comfortable, right, with your fuzzy? Just like you want your fuzzy or your, your stuffy, sorry, your stuffy to be with you all, all the time, Christ is with you all the time, no matter where you go. If he's on your head, if he's in your hands, if he's laying with you in your bed, he's with you always. Will you guys fold your hands and repeat after me? Big people, you guys too. Dear God, thank you for my baptism. Help me to tell others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for coming up, and thanks for bringing your stuffies with you. You guys can head on back to your seat, and we'll sing our next song.
to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all God's people said? Amen. Amen. So as we get started this morning, I thought we could play a game. It's a very simple game. I'm not going to make you get up and run around. I'm not Pastor Adam. So <laughs> I love you, brother. But it's a simple game. We're just going to do kind of some word associations, okay? So I'm going to say a word, and you're going to say a word back that you think matches or goes together with it. You're all ready? Here we go. Salt and... Yeah, pretty easy. All right. Shoes and... Okay, now here's one that's maybe a, a little more challenging. Coffee and... Okay, so you guys are better. We had less cream people last night than we did today. A lot of people said, nope, not creamer. How many of you guys take your coffee black? Woo, you like it strong. All right. So here's another one. This one's super easy. Bread and, there you go, and wine and, I'm glad you guys didn't say children. <laughs> so you guys did well. We are currently in a series, and in a uh, season of the church called Epiphany. And that word epiphany simply means to manifest or to reveal something, to go from not knowing it to now having a knowledge of it. And as we walk through this season, we're looking at the, the early parts of both Jesus' life as well as the early parts of his ministry and discovering what is being manifested, what is being revealed to us about the person and the work of Jesus Christ. So let's go back to our game once again. We said salt and pepper goes together, shoes and socks go together, bread and butter go together, all things that just naturally kind of fit. But what happens if we change it up? What happens if we switch it around a little bit? For example, ice cream and bacon. It seems weird, doesn't it? I've heard it said that bacon makes everything better. I'm not sure it's going to make your ice cream better. How about this one? Cheese and mayonnaise. Ooh. All right, here's one for you. Hot dogs and ranch dressing. Mmm. How about this? Strawberries and mustard. I know, right? I got to be honest, the last two, the hot dogs and ranch and strawberries and mustard, things that people, not me, but people in my family actually eat. My, like, you guys are disgusting. All right, here's one last one. Mexican food and tight jeans. Right? They seem to conflict with one another. And as you think about those things, like hot dogs and ranch, strawberries and mustard, it might make you feel kind of a little uncomfortable, especially the, the Mexican food and, and the tight jeans, right? But my point is there's a tension between those two things that don't quite go together. So let's try one last pairing. Jesus and fill in the blank. What goes there? Jesus and, it feels like there's a million right questions to it. We can say Jesus and righteousness. We can say Jesus and the cross. We can say Jesus and forgiveness. We can say Jesus and God, Jesus and Mary, Jesus and Joseph. It could go on and on. But let me throw one out to you. Jesus and sinners. Jesus and sinners. You know, depending on your perspective, those two things, Jesus and sinners, could be an odd pairing. And in fact, that odd pairing is what we see unfolding in our reading from the Gospel of Mark this morning. That reading opened up with John the Baptist. He's gone out into the wilderness to prepare the way for the Messiah. And he is calling people to confess their sins, to come and be repentant and receive a baptism of repentance. And the people, the throngs of crowds are coming out and they're doing just that. They're heeding and listening to John's preaching. They've come, they've confessed their sins, and they're going into the waters of the Jordan to be baptized. 
All the while, John continues to teach that there is one who is yet to come, one who will follow him, who's going to be greater than him, one that is so great, so mighty, that John is even unworthy to stoop down and untie the sandals of this one who is to come. And he says that this one is going to bring a new baptism, a different baptism, a greater baptism than even what John has brought. A baptism in the Holy Spirit. So setting the scene, you've got John preaching, you've got John teaching, you've got crowds and throngs of people coming to the shores and the banks of the Jordan. They're confessing their sins, they're going down in the water, and they're being baptized. And then Mark drops this one little transition note into our text. He says, at that time. As all the crowds are coming together, as everyone is is confessing their sins, in essence, as the sinners are coming together to receive a sinner's baptism, it's at that time that Jesus comes down to the shores of the Jordan to be baptized as well. The one who is greater than John. The one who would bring a greater baptism than John. One that would bring the Spirit the one that everybody was waiting for, shows up at that time and walks down to the banks of the river and goes into the water to be baptized with sinners in a sinner's baptism. Now, have you ever stopped for a moment to think about that? It's an odd pairing. The the sinless Son of God coming to the place where sinners are confessing sins and receiving a sinner's baptism. Those two things seem to go together about as well as hot dogs and ranch or strawberries and mustard. And it begs the question, why in the world would the sinless Son of God, the Savior and Messiah, receive such a baptism of repentance when he had nothing to repent of? Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? In the, in the Gospel of Matthew, it's recorded that John, when Jesus shows up, actually tells Jesus, like, dude, you don't need to be baptized. You need to baptize me. And yet Jesus insists. He persists. And he goes down into the waters. But why? Why does he do it? Is it because he's setting up an example for us? Well, sure. He shows us what it means to follow God's calling. But let's face it, within the context of that moment, that event, at that time, the throngs and the crowds were already there. They were doing everything that John was calling them to do, confessing their sins. They were repentant, being baptized. They didn't need Jesus to show up and go, hey guys, this is what we need to do now. They were already doing it. So if Jesus didn't go into the waters to set an example, why? Did he go? Was it because he had something to repent of? Well, that makes no sense. Jesus had no sin. But still he goes down to the water. And John baptizes him. And what's fascinating is as Jesus comes up out of the water, something really spectacular happens. Jesus sees that the heavens are torn open, ripped apart. The, the, The Holy Spirit descends upon him. And in that moment, he hears the voice of God the Father, who says, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And that's got to leave you with just more questions than ever. We ask, why does the sinless Son of God go down to the Jordan to receive a baptism for repentance of sins when he has none? And if he were to do this, why in the world would God the Father look upon this and say, wow, I am well pleased with this? Let me shift gears for a second and ask you a different question. Have you ever wanted to trade places with someone? Have you ever looked at someone's life and gone, man, they have got it made. I'd love to just take on their life for like one one day, two days, maybe a week, maybe, maybe more. I don't know about you, but there's been moments in my life where I've 
had a little bit of envy and jealousy, and God, I'd love to live their life just for a little bit. And of course, we know that ah, it's never going to really happen. But have you ever thought about it from a different perspective? Have you ever wanted to trade places with somebody, not because they had it so much better than you, but because they had it so bad? It's a weird thought. You know, as a parent, we raise our kids, and we know that our kids are going to go through hard times. We know that they're going to struggle and, and go through challenges that will, will make them grow. But even as you watch that happen, there's many times where you're watching them go through those things, and you're going, man, guys, I wish I could just alleviate that. And those are just ordinary things. But it gets really serious when... Our kids are diagnosed with illnesses or sicknesses that cause them huge amounts of pain. And many times as parents, we're, we feel somewhat helpless to, to really do anything, especially when the medicines and all the different things that doctors could do stop working. We had good friends in Houston whose son, at the age of four, was diagnosed with cancer. And for two and a half years, that little boy battled and battled and battled. And I know those parents many times looked at their son who was suffering and thought, man, if I could just trade places with him. He could have a full life of joy without pain and without sorrow. Have you ever felt like that? Now, I know realistically, we can't. I can't trade places with you. You can't trade places with me. But this leads us to the reason why Jesus went to the Jordan that day to be baptized. While you and I can't trade places, you see, he can and he did. As Jesus stepped into the waters of that river, he was stepping into the place of sinners. By going under the waters of John's baptism, a baptism of repentance, he was intentionally identifying himself with sinners. He was connecting himself to you and to me. He was identifying with us in every single way, identifying, connecting, associating with us in every way so that when the time came for the cross, it wasn't you or I or anyone else that would walk up to the hill of Calvary, but it would be Jesus who would carry that cross, who would be crucified in our place. You see, Jesus goes down to the waters to step into our place. His baptism is his first step in giving you his righteousness and taking your sinfulness to be his own. The one who knew no sin walked into the waters of the Jordan that day and was baptized to become sin for us. This moment in, in the Gospel of Mark in his very first opening sentence, I think, is, is so powerful because he says at the very opening of the Gospel, he says, this is the beginning of the good news. And immediately he moves to Jesus' baptism. This is the beginning of the good news. The beginning of the good news that Jesus will step into our place, that he will take on our sins so that we would be forgiven and he would take the punishment for us. And guys, this is precisely why the Father looks upon Jesus, his Son, when he receives this baptism and says, I am well pleased because he takes that first step. So what two things go together? Salt and pepper, bread and butter, Jesus, and sinners. He came to be baptized, to be connected with you. But what's so incredible is that it really doesn't stop there because John goes on in his teaching to say that this one who he was preparing the way for, the one who was greater, would bring a different baptism, a greater baptism, a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Not just a baptism uh, of repentance, but a baptism that would bring forgiveness and life and salvation that would clothe us with his righteousness. The Apostle Paul teaches this very thing from our Romans reading. In chapter 6, verse 3, he says this, Don't you know 
that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. The baptism that Jesus gives to us is a baptism that brings forgiveness, salvation, and new life. Let me ask you, what two things in your life seem to go together that maybe you don't want to go together? Or we could ask it more pointedly, what sins in your life, sinful thoughts or words or actions, seem connected to you, seem to follow you, seem to to be there all the time no matter what? What sins this morning do you need to be forgiven of so that you can live that new life that Jesus gives to us? Jesus took on that sinner's baptism, identifying with you. And he has given to you his baptism, one that brings that forgiveness and life. In baptism, Paul tells us again in Romans 6, He says, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Offer every part of yourself as an instrument of righteousness. You see, God has given you a new life in Christ. He says, count the old dead. Count it crucified, put to death with Jesus at the cross. It's done, it's gone. And count yourselves alive in Jesus. Alive to God because of Christ. And he says, live now in that new life. Knowing that every day that you wake up, It is your baptismal grace that God has given to you that brings that new life. That every day, because of that baptism, you can start anew. Every day when you wake up, you know with confidence and assurance that the promises that God has given to you are sure because you felt the water. We heard the words. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so every day we count ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And I want to tell you that these promises and blessings of baptism are available to anyone who desires them. They're free gifts of God. There's nothing that you need to do to to earn them. There's nothing that you have to pay or anything like that. God says, this is totally free and I will give it to you in this very simple way of water and the power of my word. And so I want to say to you today, if you've never been baptized or maybe your your children have not been baptized, I want you to consider that maybe now could be the time to take that step in your relationship with God. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young. Jesus' baptism is for all whom the Lord our God calls. I still remember my baptism. It was November 8th, 1998. I was 18 years old. And I remember it was such a big deal. I had to go through a 10-week class before they baptized me. You couldn't miss any, you guys. Do you know how hard that is for an 18-year-old? But I did it. We made it. And I remember going to church that day, and I thought, man, this is the moment where, like, we are going to count my old life dead, and I'm going to move into a new life. And if you know me enough, you know I never wear ties for hardly anything. But, man, I wore a tie that day because I knew how incredibly special it was. It was a day that, that my now wife was my sponsor. She stood up there with me. My parents, who had never taken me to church, never been to church with me, showed up that day. We had friends and family. It was incredible. Guys, if you've not been baptized, God's promises are there for you, free. And maybe now is the time to take that next step. If you're interested 
in taking that next step, we want to invite you to join uh, us as pastors as we walk through what baptism means. In order to do that, if you would like um, to find out more information about that, all you have to do is just text the word baptism to this phone number, 812-775-2300. Pull out your phone right now and text baptism. And we'll walk you through what it means to receive these incredible blessings and assurance and promises that God offers. We're going to leave this up on screen while we pray. If you want, feel free during that time just to go ahead and uh, text that. You'll get a couple of prompts on when we're doing that and in, uh, in the next month. And uh, we hope to see you there. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning uh, we are so thankful for your free gifts. We're so thankful that you sent your son to step into our place to take on our sins and our punishment, that the shame and the guilt and the condemnation that comes with sin would be removed from us, that we would be washed clean. Heavenly Father, for those of us here today that, that might be uh, considering and thinking about what that next step for them could be, Lord, I just pray for your wisdom and guidance in their hearts and in their lives. And for us who have been baptized, every day, Lord, remind us of that baptismal grace that you have bestowed upon us, that each morning we can wake up, counting our old self and sins dead, and us alive to you because of Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks that you work through water and the word for our benefit. Lord, through baptism, we receive your promises. Your promise, Lord, that you are with us always until the very end of the age. Help us, Heavenly Father, to take up the promises that we have in our baptism each and every day, that we may be comforted by your forgiveness, and that we, Heavenly Father, through your Spirit, may live a life in thought, word, and in, in deed that looks, Heavenly Father, for the good of our neighbors, for the good of our family. Heavenly Father, as we look to proclaim your name to this world. Heavenly Father, we ask that you comfort the family of Jim Hudson, the father of Robert Hudson, who was 
called home to heaven. We ask that you hold this family during their time of loss and grief. Bind them together, Heavenly Father, through your resurrection. That because you died and because you rose, we also, Heavenly Father, will follow your lead and will also one day rise when you come back to this earth and usher all people who have believed and trusted in your promises into the new heavens and the new earth that you are preparing for us. Father, we give you all of our praise and thanks as we remember your gift of grace as you give us that forgiveness. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to pour out those baptism blessings on all, on all of us. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that those who have not been baptized yet may be led by your Spirit to the waters where you so eagerly look to welcome them as your children. Heavenly Father, we ask that you have mercy upon those suffering from addiction. Please guide them along your paths of liberating peace and wholeness. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are sick and hospitalized. We pray for Bob Frankie, Susie Hopkins, Caroline Klimps, Matt Middendorf, Steve Norman, Tim Roberts, and Jim Sockleben. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear us. Hear us now as we unite our voices as one, as we unite our voices as the church, and pray that prayer that you have given to us. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we end the service, receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.